let's go. Drinks on Dusty, let's start the show. Drinks on Dusty, coming in hot, coming in to blow up the spot. Guess we picking what we be drinking. We don't know what Dusty is thinking. We are here to have a good time. See where the combo may just climb. Sit back, put your drinks up. Go on, y'all, fill up your cup. Drinks on Dusty, let's go. Come on, y'all, start the show. Oh no. Go All right, it. ladies and gentlemen, episode four of the Drinks on Dusty podcast. I am, of course, your host, Dusty. For you, we are on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on iHi Radio now, too, which is awesome, and all the podcast things. Um, So just before we even start and I introduce my guests, um, if you could, you uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to all the podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Rate it. Tell me if I'm cool. Tell me if I suck don't really care or whatever but today we have a very 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 special guest i've been excited um one of the fun things is when i first started uh this podcast adventure i made myself my own little list of people i wanted on uh you didn't make number one but uh number one was a broadway actor so you know hey but number two <laughs> number that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> one of the top people i've wanted to have on this podcast is my good friend joe hansen so joe hansen welcome to the podcast my man what's up everybody yeah. oh god you're gonna blow people's ears off i <laughs> know have man. fun editing that together <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I barely know how to do it um oh my, my man well, be you know fun. what's also special is this the first time i've done this podcast with an actual shirt on and not a cutoff so i figured it <laughs> I figured I would uh, dress up for you a little bit. However, I, to be very honest, I was thinking about what to wear tonight, and I was like, should I go full-blown, like, just, should I go t-shirt? Should I go, like, button-up? And I was like, maybe I should just go with what I would think Dustin would wear, which would be a backwards hat and a cut-off t-shirt. Hey, that would have been awesome, actually. And, and I almost did. Um, ah, but, no, hey. I, took a, I took a shower and uh, took a sh- decided, <laughs> I decided shower. to, to um, maybe clean up my act a little clean bit. Clean up your act. Well, hey, I also took a shower, too. So I'm in the middle of hey. my 14-day four, quarantine. So, you know, I showered, brushed my teeth like I'm going anywhere. And you did your deeds that. for the day. I, I mean, you're, you're done. And it's you're all done. All you have too. to do is eat after that you're <laughs> yeah. good well yeah the eating will come after the drinking but uh well, of man, course priorities priorities <laughs> um my man joe thank you so much for being on today i am hey, of course thank you so much for having me Dude, i am literally I so excited for ever this. my brother um can you tell the people at home first of all like everyone's wondering what are we drinking today my man we are drinking miller light Miller no Light. judgment because I love this beer. I genuinely love this beer. All right. So cheers, my brother. We'll cheers. We'll drink it. Cheers to you, my man. Why why did we pick Miller Light today? Um, so I have a I have a, a kind of a process when it comes to, when it came to I'm finally at the point where I where I consider myself a beer guy, but when I was first okay. starting off, uh 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 on my alcohol journey, I guess we're gonna call it that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I still call, don't I like know that. if I, I still don't know if I like how I just phrased it, but, um, <laughs> I like how you phrase it, which well, probably thank a bad you. thing, but you know, Hey, well, you <laughs> know, it's whatever. Um, I, I, I knew I liked uh whiskey. Uh, I knew immediately I was a whiskey cause I'm related to Jack Daniels. Uh, wait, what? I am. I am related to Jack Daniels. My no, you're fucking not. You're a liar. You're no, a li- I dead. I, I dead, ser- dead serious. Am. My, That's awesome. my grandmother's mother. So my great, great grandmother. Your yeah, my great yeah. my great grandmother was a Daniels. Okay, so how did you find out you related to him? Just because uh, I mean, I'm because it's there's Daniels. A lot of I don't know. My mom told me. All right, and I trust my mom. All right, that's hey. All right, well, I understand that, but um, my my dad once told me I had to sign Brett Favre football, who is like my favorite football player of all time. Brett, and I you saw- and John Madden. Yeah, me, me and John Madden. Yeah, you and John yeah. Madden. Hey, hey, you know who's the greatest football player ever? Brett Favre. Boom! Tough acting, to acting. <laughs> that's a terrible John Madden impersonation. Hey, I mean, that's not that bad. I can't do any better. But my dad told me that I had a signed Brett Favre football, and I cherished that football. And then I remember walking through Walmart when I was younger, and I saw fucking 80 of the footballs there. And it, I mean, it, I mean, granted, maybe it was, but it wasn't like personally signed. And when oh I yeah! I went up to him like, "Dad, you told me this was personally signed by Brad Favre." He's like, "No, I fucking did. I didn't say that. I, no, I didn't say that." You I don't know did. What you're talking about and, son. 
fucking liar. Santa um, Claus? Who the who the fuck is Santa Claus? Who are you talking about? <laughs> I never fucking told you. Santa Claus. If you believe that shit. I did tell you about the tooth fairy though. All right, that shit's real. <laughs> I, I, I slept with her. What? You slept with the tooth fairy? <laughs> You can't be saying that shit when I'm drinking, all right, man? <laughs> I about spit all over my microphone. <laughs> Joe, one of my favorite things about you, um, not st- I'm not going to start off sentimental yet, but... Uh, I was going to say, we're early in the night no, for sentimental, not man. I'm not ready yet. Um, <laughs> we, You get my humor. You're probably one of the... If I'd have to really like rank like five people in the world that really understand my humor... And we can just go off on tangents about inside jokes or whatever. And like, I can say something and know, you know what I mean by it without explaining it to you. Mm-hmm. And we'll go. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Oh, well, that. thank you. So, I think, uh, honestly, I think part of that is, uh, comes with the, uh, the spirit of a Midwesterner, uh-huh. you know? Um, and you know, maybe there, are, I'm sure there are other parts of the country that, that do this thing too, but, um, Fuck them. we don't care. <laughs> we don't care. We don't, <laughs> we don't care about them. We don't, we don't care at all. <laughs> Um, but being, being a Midwesterner, uh, there are these things where it's just like, someone can make a remark about the weather and then you come back with like this little, like snarky little, huh, wait five minutes, it'll change sort of deal, you know? (laughs) And it's like these like crappy little like warm up jokes to like these strangers that you've never met. But I think it starts from there, but you and I, uh, once you, you build this, it's like, you take that concept of this Midwesterner joke and then you apply it to our stupidity, and that's like, that's yeah. kind of where the ball starts rolling. <laughs> I like that we talk about our stupidity. Oh, I mean, I mean, is there any other way to no phrase not it? Not at all. Not I at mean, all. And I just get it. I get it. Like, you, oh yeah, it's my I, I mean, I, thing. first of all, like quirkiness and weirdness, I have always considered uh, a, a massive compliment. Like even yeah. like go- going growing up in like elementary school, people would be like, "Man, you're weird." You know that? I'd be like, "Thank you very much." <laughs> I because uh, I think it uh, I don't know it, it set me apart, and I enjoyed people being like, "That's weird," but they also would laugh about it, and so it's so like, you didn't yeah. that didn't like um, hurt your feelings for lack of a better term. Like I think some people would be like, "You're weird." You're like, oh, "God, God, fucking damn it!" Did no. you feel like you didn't want to need to, <clears throat> the need to conform to the norm, especially when you're younger, which is like no. a big thing. Yeah, no, I, well, and especially going into middle school, once I had gotten into theater more, um, Mm -hmm. it, 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 the theater was the thing that actually helped me break out of my shell. In elementary school, believe it or not, I was an incredibly shy kid. Oh, really? Very, very, very shy kid. Which is like the word I would not describe you as. Well, uh, thank you. I, and I, I, I would no longer describe me as a shy person, um, but I was very, you know, I, I didn't want to break out of my box. I didn't want to try new things. I didn't want to, um, I had like my group of people and nobody else I wanted to have anything to do with. Um, okay. I stayed inside and played video games a lot. I mean, it was like, I get, get home, get done with my homework, immediately head downstairs and turn on the game. So you were like an introvert then very much in middle so. school. Okay. Very much so. Uh, this is uh, continuing what I even said at the first is like, cont- <laughs> like, so I love continuing a joke and just going and seeing how far it'll last. Oh, hundred percent. I fucking love that. We do that. One of, uh, one of the, f- one of my favorite things that uh, shout out to Chase Guthrie can even, who was your guest two episodes ago. Two episodes ago and <laughs> shouted you out literally 25,000 times. And expect that again, this episode <laughs> for him. Um, one of the greatest things he and I will do is we'll do like wordplay association games. Um, oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not kidding you. We were, we were riding home on the C train back in New York from Brooklyn college. All right. We, uh, college, I, okay. I did a, I did a student film at Brooklyn college and we went to go watch the premiere of it. And then we were riding back on the C train and we passed the E train. And like, <clears throat> I basically was just like the E train for elephant. And then he goes like the E train for excellent. And then we spent, I'm not kidding you, the next 45 minutes of the ride home coming up with different E words. And that's all we did. And then you would just do it the whole time? We just did that the whole time. I think even after we got off the train, we were like still trying to come up with words that started with E. Um, Is and that like something until, you- until we got in our apartment and we're like, okay, hey, we got we to gotta stop this. We're going to drive ourselves nuts. <laughs> Because Chase is, um, as 
past viewers are Chase was my second uh guest and then he was literally he texted me and goes, I want to be on and I go, <laughs> Fucking okay, cool. I all I honestly was about to do the exact same thing before I even knew that he did that. I was like, Man, what what hey, what's guy gotta do to get on this podcast? I was just I didn't I think I was like a week I I was like, Fuck, I need to I haven't actually contacted anybody and then he had just texted me. <laughs> I just had this list. <laughs> You yeah. talk the the stuff you're talking about with Chase. Is that something you kind of specifically kind of do with him? And like, is this a Ben a Ben a best friend? Move yeah, a best friend thing that you guys have. He yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, uh, first like you of don't all, word I'm, associate with like everybody you talk to. Oh no, 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 no. I because I, Chase and I like we we. It's a lot like what you and I are doing, where it's like one person will say an idea and then the other person will bounce it off, bounce it off, and it's just constantly going back and forth. Okay. Um. Uh, and to give a little bit of backstory on how that started, I uh, I am a huge uh, Game Grumps fan on YouTube. What is Game Grumps? Game Grumps is a let's let's play channel, and they um, you know it's like some episodes they get into like really ph- philosophical talk, and some episodes they're like um, it's just like nonstop jokes, and they it's random games. But uh, they were playing Ma- one of the Mario Party games. And they were talking about in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, when uh, at the very beginning, how uh, Anakin has like uh, Count Dooku in like double lightsabers, like about ready to like decapitate him or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, they were they were referring to how during that scene, Anakin's like, "Should I do it?" And then he goes to, and then Palpatine is like, "Kill him, kill him now!" And then he's like, "Really?" And then Palpatine says the infamous, do it. Um, and so then they started like doing a whole bunch of wordplay association with that, where it was like, Palpatine, I broke my pencil, glue it. And it was, um, Palpatine, what should we do with all this day old meat? Stew it. And it was a bunch of that. Um, and so I showed him that clip and then we started like coming up with our own word association for it also. And it's so fun to like just and they're corny stupid jokes but it's like it it warms our hearts and it makes us so giddy and excited because of like we're just being playful and stupid i mean and and there's like no harm in it whatsoever and it's it's just awesome i love that i think what i was trying to get to at the moment now i can still recall my points uh at some point during the end of this podcast i won't be able to um but so like, you're already doing better than i am man. <laughs> hey, thanks i appreciate I don't know what it. i said 30 seconds ago <laughs> it's usually not the case i um i think it's really cool uh talking about like a best friendship which like you and chase have and it's kind of like me and miles as you like a good friend like you know miles and miles oh, yeah. is my best friend and we have those kind of inside things uh one of the things me and him would do in college was we would just be um we would talk in this voice and this is going to be annoying. And I'm going to try to do it right now, but it's like oh, we would do this, this dad voice. And we would just talk really high pitch. Like we would be, leave rehearsal in the theater and it would be like, dad, dad, <laughs> dad, why does not mom love me right now? And then he would come back with like, yeah, dad, how come, how come sometimes when I wake up, you spray me with water and never talk to me the rest of the week. It's and we would appointment, son. Yeah. We never had the other dad, but we would just do that. The like we would just be walking and just do that. And I've never had a friend that like I could do that with. So I think it's uh, it's fun to it's really cool to have like a a close best friend type that when you have that relationship with. It's really awesome because it's something that's unlike anything else in your life, truly. Oh, hundred percent. And Maybe you and Miles can attest to this. Uh, maybe you and Miles had a similar uh, experience. Like when yeah, he's he under had... the bed right now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, hi, Miles. <laughs> uh, so uh, Chase and I, from my recollection, didn't even like consider ourselves best friends. I mean, we consider ourselves really good friends, but it wasn't until like, oh man, I don't know, like second semester freshman year when like people like obviously like we were like this like friend couple you know you definitely were which you know it's like it was like everybody it was like you can't mention chase without joe and vice versa like it was like we were constantly like hanging out and like it it was like one was cohesive with the other um but it wasn't until someone literally asked us are you guys best friends that we looked at each other and we're like yeah i i I guess we are (laughs) <laughs> you know, it, it just like had it hadn't like dawned on us 
that we were best friends until someone was like, are you guys best friends? And we're like, oh, you know, I hadn't even thought about it, but yeah. I mean, that's really interesting. I mean, because I think it was kind of the same. I guess that's probably the best friendships. Or the like the Because Miles and I never, we didn't sit there and talk. I mean, I think it probably crap happened out because I hated him first time I ever met him. And I'm not going to bore everybody with that story because I've told that on our podcast <laughs> that we had anyway. But I uh, hated Miles the first time I ever met him. And then when we lived together senior year, my senior year, and yeah. we just became like, me and him have literally had one fight in our entire lives. We literally just talked about everything. And yeah, one day it was just like, yeah, he's my best friend. He's my best friend. And that's just how yeah. it is. Uh, so Chase, I have not talked about like who you are. So tell us. Um, no, 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 no. You don't get to go back on that. All right. This Why? is going back. This is because you said you just called me Chase, didn't you? Oh my God, did I just call you Chase? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. So for those of you who may not know... Um... I have to edit that out, Joe. I no, no, you're not. I am making this so you can't edit it out. You oh, God fucker. damn it. Um, damn it. No, you absolutely cannot edit this out. Um, I'm Let me, okay, you. before we... It's your I, podcast. You would have, no, you do but you before we make it clear, Joe and I are... As I love Chase. Joe and I have always been closer. Um, Chase literally just really? added me. Yeah, Chase and I just add. Chase just added me on Snapchat an hour ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I've known you for fucking like plus five years. <laughs> well, okay, but okay. This well, this is reminding me of. I didn't I think, like the. I didn't like the way you said "really" there because I thought it was pretty. I thought we were close. And you're just like, yeah, really. <laughs> Dustin, I don't really like you. Well, no, I didn't. I never. I didn't know that you ever. When I said really, I didn't know that you ever considered. No, it's fine. You're an asshole. Like, it's okay. Well, I mean, yeah, but the, you knew that. That's the reason why you're having me on this podcast. Yeah. Because yeah. you're a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not a big deal. Oh God, we're gonna have to get into all those things. Yeah, but we are. Joe, <laughs> tell we're gonna be everybody. sharing the inside jokes on this on the podcast. Justin, Yo, listen to me. You're you not rich, <laughs> and you're not a big deal. Uh, no, tell not. everybody about who the fuck you are, my man. What um, is okay. you do? My name um, is uh, my name is Joseph Aaron Hansen. I'm a Pisces. I was uh, okay. born pre two thousand. Uh, I today. enjoy long walks on the beach. Okay. Um, well, no, uh, actually, I'm a I'm an actor. I'm a singer. I'm a guitarist. I'm a voiceover artist um goofball weirdo a person who just loves love uh jokes theater music specifically heavy metal music uh joe you were one of the people that uh when i first met you <clears throat> you which is a big compliment what i'm about to say is a big compliment uh, in my head um uh, because i don't say this with very much anybody you make me laugh genuinely and I don't have to, like, you know how some people you talk to and you're like, ha, 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 yeah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, for sure. There's always stuff. You, I just laugh. You're funny as fuck. You're incredibly oh, talented man. Uh, as an actor. And I remember um, one of the cool things is I'm, I'm older than you. I'm a grandpa. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you came in when I was a, a senior in college. And I remember, like, you had even told me when we were texting about this. Maggie kind of brought you in. My good friend, Maggie Smith, she had just said, mm -hmm. I know these guys and I didn't really know the younger class really. And you guys mm -hmm. came to our place that we were living in mm -hmm. and I fell in love with you and Chase, but I fell in love with you immediately because Chase, this is about Chase. Chase already had his moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I fell in love with you immediately as how funny you were, how I, you're not a, you're not a monkey. I want this to be clear, but I, <laughs> I remember like this. There's first, a story about that though. Okay. Did you fuck a monkey, bro? What? No, no. <laughs> I, I did a show where I, I, uh, I played a chimpanzee. Oh, okay. Along but with I, like 50 other characters. But 50 other characters. Um, I'm not exaggerating you, that number either. I counted. You, the first time we were like, you basically coming to my uh, townhouse or apartment or whatever you call those mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And I was just sitting there drinking and you As would you just be are. go. Yeah. And you would just be going around and I would, I was literally just like watching a movie. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening here? I've never met you guys. And I just fell in love. And I, 
it's a weird thing, I think, in college theater especially. I think it is kind of, you're finding your groove. And I wanted to, like, I'm not a role, I don't know if I'm a role model ever, but I was like, ah, and I'm going to take care of these people. I felt like I was Mm kind of, at that point in my college career, Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a big deal. But at that time, I felt, I was like, I want to take these guys in and, like, that I'm going to invite them to all the parties. I'm going to make sure that they're, they're there. I'm going to make sure you guys are the coolest people. How do you come up with the, the energy that you have? You have this energy that is kismic and powerful. How do you keep uh, that up? And you keep it up to a level that is just incredible to me. Um, I wonder how you keep that up. Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for all your kind words. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit and elaborate on the story. So yes, Maggie, Mag, we were the first college show Chase and I were, were, in ever um was a show maggie smith directed who was your roommate yeah and uh it's actually right on my desk too yeah great look at you, a picture I mean, right now. you just take the panda pit wherever you go i do uh and uh so she invited us over i don't know if it was for anything that had to do with the show i think it might have just been to like hang out and chase and i being the freshmen that we were we're like oh my god we're 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 already like a week in and we're we're getting invited to like a junior and seniors townhouse and like are, is this like what is this like what the movie stars feel like yeah it was popular back then everybody um, was popular um, back then. and like we were we were really excited um and you know we didn't know anybody um and then yeah it's like we we met you guys and you know we're trying to like show off i think i think we were trying to show off a little bit being like yeah we could be fun you know <laughs> um and I, I don't know how we got, well, you mentioned uh, uh, Kevin Hart. Uh, yeah, we, we really bonded over yeah, him. And, we, and uh, yeah, at the time, my, one of my favorite, favorite stand-up bits across anybody was the, all right, all right, all right, go learn today. Um, I think I really, I, I connected with you because of that, because I think, obviously, he wasn't as big of a, like a big of a star as he is now. But I would just, I watched his stand-up comedy all the time. I, I, oh, yeah. I just, I thought he was the funniest person. Oh my and God, And when yeah. you knew what I was talking about, like, I think, I, I think, uh, fuck, I don't know, but I, I remember uh, the, talking about a bit that he did, and then you knew what the bit was, and then kept doing it. I was like, this dude knows the bit, or whatever? Oh, yeah. Comedic yeah. bit. Bits are um, things in comedy where you talk about them and you make a joke. Yes. Um. And then I, I remember later that night, because I could already tell I had you like on a roll. Like I had you on a roll and I was like, oh, was if, he likes this, if he likes this, he's going to like this. <laughs> uh, another one of my favorite comedians um, wa- is, uh, not was, is Frank Caliendo, who is, um, if, you don't know who, if you don't know who Frank Caliendo is, he is an incredible uh, voice actor, impressionist, um, just super, super funny guy. Um, he now does a lot with ESPN. Yeah, um, he does like he, he his impressions he, on like coaches and everything. Yeah, and and uh, like they're it's so so funny. They're spot um, on too. Oh they're yeah, incredible. but he uh, he he did a a bit where uh it was uh it, where it was Chris Farley. It was he he mentioned how like a Tupac Shakur thing where it was like he died and then like six months later an album or a movie came out with him. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And you mentioned that I was like, I wish like something would happen with uh, Chris Farley like that. And so he goes into like this movie trailer where it's like a year later, it's like in a movie kept so top secret that even his friends never knew it was made. Coming this <laughs> fall, the legend lives on because Chris Farley is Batman. <laughs> and then he goes into this fantastic physical Chris Farley impersonation. And he's just like, oh, my freaking gourd. I am the Cape Crusader. I lurk in the shadows. I'm a creature of the night and have a little bit of what you call the weight problem. Um, and, he, and, he, and then he, and he does like the whole like, uh, I got to put my beer down for this. <laughs> it gets so physical. And I don't even know if I can do this while sitting down. But he's like, you think you know what you're doing? You're out here running around there's like this whole crazy thing and then he feels like well let me tell you this son you don't know Damn. Go on. um and, and and that was like one of my favorite favorite bits ever at the time so moving forward into your next question off of chris farley i grew up 
watching Tommy Boy and Chris Farley on SNL, um, living in a van down by the river, all that. Uh, you- so Chris Farley was one of my hugest inspirations. I was just immediately drawn to his performance, like from day one. Um, and, and, and I was so young, I didn't need to understand what was being said. It was so physical based that I knew exactly yeah. where it was going. And, and that's physical um, comedy is remarkable. And I, I, mm-hmm. I, it took like years after like kind of, I think uh, me being a big Adam Sandler mm-hmm. fan and like yeah. listening to him talk about Chris Farley and be like, well, I need to look back and see, and just mm-hmm. seeing how great he was. Yeah. Do you, do you consider yourself like an impressionist? Cause you're one of the better impressionists that I know personally. I um you're really good at your physical comedy is one thing, which is such an important part as an actor. Your physical comedy is one of the most intense things I've ever worked with. Intense mm-hmm. is a good thing. Like, inc- I'm like, how do you fucking like? God damn, I'm not loose enough to do that shit. Is that a big um, part of your acting? And it your is. Impressions I, and- I'm a I. I get I get um. The, uh, there's a there's a, a method in acting um, where you are and people will phrase this differently um, but I, I heard it phrased this way there are people who are thinker feelers and there are people who are feeler thinkers so it's like which one comes first I'm definitely a feeler thinker so I and I feel something by embracing it in my body um, and so that's where a lot of my physical physical energy comes from um, and it's, I like exuding this energy because exuding this energy gives people the energy to exude it back to me and vice versa. And so it's like, you're literally just forming this giant energy. Um, Some energy ball. It's, it's this giant energy ball. And, and in comedy, especially, it is so much of just play. Yeah. And uh, you literally just feel like a kid again. It's like, I can, I can play. I can, this is just raucous comedy and I hear the laughter and it makes me go even further. Um, because, um, comedy and laughter have always been like the center of, uh, of what really warms my heart, uh, in terms of, uh, theater and connecting with just people in general. There's a great quote, <laughs> by the voice actor who um who does um he he does animaniacs he does the carl on jimmy neutron um he uh he actually had throat cancer um and he's professional voice actor professional animated voice actor and he had throat cancer and it really threatened his career he since beat it and has you know powered on through it's it's such an inspirating an inspirational story um but he, uh, he, he has this quote that is, um, laughter is the best medicine. And the best thing is you, you, the refills are free and you can't overdose on it. Wow. Yeah. And That's so an amazing quote. Yeah. And there's another quote um, that actually uh, a friend of ours, Taryn Yui, shout out to Taryn Yui, um, shared with me when I, uh, my senior year of college, when I played Scrooge, um, she sent me a note and attached to it was a Charles Dickens quote that was, um, and it's actually the background of my laptop right now is there, uh, there is nothing so irresistibly contagious in this world as laughter and good humor. Because fucking... I think, I think a lot of, you know, especially now with like this whole quarantine, I mean, like there's a lot of, um, and, and I'm not, I'm not going to get political with this at all, but there's a lot of, um, frankly just negativity all around the world and there's a lot of stuff there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that can weigh people down um some of it's very personal some of it's um you know more publicized um but i think i genuinely feel that laughter is the best medicine because like i when i've had a shitty shitty day um like i don't even want to get out of bed shitty day um if i can find something that puts a smile on my face like that's at least the motivation to take one step out of my yeah. head. If I can laugh, that's like another two steps. If I can gut belly laugh, like that could set me up for the entire day. Yeah, you know? it, can, it can really just kind of erase stand up comedian specials are what I go to bed to every night. Like I yeah. have to, like I, I put it on and it's like you laugh and you, it's a special I've seen a thousand times, but it, yeah. it can make you feel good. And I think that's so spot on, Joe, is just mm. having that kind of comedy which you're so incredible with. I think as an, I, I do have a question as well, an you. actor, you, 
so I I've seen comedy is kind of your strength that I've seen. Do you have an a, a problem or not problem issue or is it harder for you to get into dramatic type roles that you play? Um, because comedian know, comedic is kind of your natural state, which is an amazing. It is. It is. Um, actually, no. Um, it it's weird because um. Uh, because of like the physical energy that I always wanted to bring and everything, when I was a freshman and sophomore, um, I felt very in tuned with the comedic. And then I took um, acting three and acting four, which is where you get into realism, super realism. Um, so acting three, you're dealing with uh, Ibsen, Chekhov, Tennessee Williams, Mamet, uh, Arthur. Uh, that's and then acting four, you get into Mamet, oh. um, Sam, Sam Tool. I forgot. I forget everything. Yeah. No, it's okay. And then Pinter. Well, I took, I, I love those classes so much because they taught me and I, and I grew so much from those classes that I took each one of them twice. Um, and I it completely got something new out of both classes each time, even though it was the exact same class. And that's where I really were, were started getting into like, oh, this is like, this is what it feels to be grounded in a character. This is what it feels like to take these lines on a page and be able to have an actual conversation using these words that aren't mine, make them mine and, and have a conversation with this other character and actually get somewhere and, and paint like, you know, artistically paint this picture that is this scene uh, in a play. And so by the time I was a senior, I actually did my senior uh, project over, I have a very love-hate relationship with Chekhov. Um, I, I, Drew and I actually talked about Chekhov on the slides. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> Recording I, too, it's interesting. I, I hate I never that cared I, for him. I didn't, I, 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 I hate that I love that I hate Chekhov. Well, like, Chekhov is really based off of full-on realism in mm -hmm. like, it's real life. Yeah, which you have to have appreciation for. This is how real people are acting. When you're seeing it on stage, especially for someone that may not have, I think, with a big life experiences mm -hmm. in college. When I first, I was like, "What the fuck are we doing? I don't care about this shit at all." Oh yeah. But when you're older and you kind of like, that's kind of how I would have handled that situation too. And it's yeah. full on realism. And well, and and then you add to the fact that like Chekhov's, Chekhov's works like on on the base level are so depressing yeah. um but then you add to the fact that it's like no he wrote comedies and you're like what and then you start learning about this um uh cycle that he that you know and and then realism incorporates this cycle where it's just like no matter where you start no matter how far you're getting you're just going to end up back at the end um which is why uh my senior thesis was like Chekhov was like the ultimate um dark comedy writer mm -hmm. um and it was uh and and part of it was like what do you what do you take away from your four years at wesleyan and um having started with uh like comedy for people that don't know nebraska wesleyan again well actually half yeah. the last two guests we've all went to college in nebraska wesleyan mm -hmm. and lincoln um, nebraska continue in lincoln nebraska yes um and and so wh what it was was um i came into college very comedic. I was reflecting on these four years. Came to college very comedic. By the end of um, college, I was playing dramatic and um, in some ways evil and cynical and harsher roles. Um, but, and then by the end of my senior year, I was like, you know, I want to, there are these people, but I want to find the humanity in them. And everybody, no matter what your personality is, has comedy in some way or another. Um, so, you know, I could be doing Streetcar Named Desire, but there's some comedy in there somewhere, whether it be one word that gets a chuckle or a full-blown monologue that has people gut-busting because the character's the comedic relief. Um, or the way that you act, like some movement yeah. that you do or anything like yeah. that. That's really important um, to know. So yeah. I, I wanted to, from that moment on, each character that I played was no longer strictly comedy or strictly dramatic it was like where's the middle ground like yes the p overall piece like i was in dirty rotten scoundrels like that overall piece that's a raucous comedy but mm -hmm. where are the serious moments then where it's like okay oh okay so i see where we're going with this now vice versa um 
I take uh, Scrooge in Christmas Carol, who's a very harsh, you know, person and everything's negative, pessimistic, maybe. Um, yeah. And it's like, okay, where are the moments where um, maybe he's got some joy in him before his big change? Where are the moments where I can get a laugh out of the audience um, and still remain true to the story? Um, even if it's just like one single word. And so my overall thesis was comedy evokes tragedy, evokes comedy, evokes tragedy, which again goes back to the whole cycle deal. It's like you, yeah. you can't have one without the other. So you decided to move back to Nebraska. I did. I, um, so How have you felt college, about that decision and everything? You know, um, during this quarantine, mind yeah, you. As we... Yeah, during this quarantine. After college, me and three of my closest friends moved to New York, all actors. Uh, we, Did uh, you go right right after college, Joe? We, we, we stayed this summer in our respective homes, uh, worked, made money, and then we moved uh, actually in October. Um, so, okay. so we stayed uh, what, Pretty three, soon, which is a months? pretty big yeah. move. Yeah. We, we didn't want to go like immediately because we wanted to save up as much money as we possibly could. But we knew if Smart. we waited too long, we would never have gotten there. So we met months in advance and we're like, we're going to be here by this date. So we moved in October out to New York. Um, uh, I was there well before I left the first time to go to Nebraska due to um, quarantine and everything. I was there a year and a half. Um, yeah, a year and a half. God, it's fucking yeah. crazy. I just remember I you. Know. I know, right? Yeah. And it, I'm and it, trying to remember when you got here and like, I know. It oh feels shit, like, Joe's here. And yeah. Oh, the first two, the first two weeks, Chase and I were there. I think we spent two nights um, in the rest of the nights we were out, um, you know, just hanging out at people's apartments, like catching up with friends, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So no, we, uh, uh, I was there a year and a half during that time. I think about a th- roughly a third to maybe half that time i was uh fortunate enough to work outside of the city and i say i say that in that like fortunate enough that like oh i gotta leave new york it's like no i was fortunate enough to be working you have a work ethic that is inspiring to me um as much as i think that i work hard and i was also fortunate enough to i had a show my first week in the city and i Mm -hmm. had my first year and a half i had shows i was doing shows Granted, weren't yeah. big shows. I had big odd, whatever. But anyway, you you came here. You took the city by storm, which is something that cannot be understated. It is, you know, I, I'm so proud of my words I'm using right now because I usually can't <laughs> use big words like this. Um, but it, it can't be understated. You came in here and I did a show and then you left, which is like the thing in New York City. You do a show. You come to New York City to kind of get out of New York City as an actor. Yeah. To book a show to leave. Granted, if you book Broadway on New York, Ultimate Dream, oh, you yeah. you constantly just I'm I'm doing a sh- I'm gonna do a show for a month, which is the true testament of a New York actor. That's what a New York actor is. You're in New York, I'm auditioning, and I have a show. All right, the show's gonna take me out for a month and a half. I'm gonna be out of commission for a month and a half. Do the yeah. show, come back. That is, you're that's like living the technical New York dream. In a sense, yeah, man. I mean, and I I I was so lucky, man. Um, I was so lucky, and and I credit honestly a lot of that to the massive support that I had from so many different uh, areas. Um, You know, my parents are my biggest supporters of all time. And um, like, they're my rock through this all. Um, My friends were incredible. Y'all, y'all were incredible. Um, I have a, I have a very close family friend who um, he's retired since then, but was the uh, executive director of an amazing company called theater forward in New York. Um, so I got to have a lot of cool opportunities with them um, and, and learn a lot of like more of the business side of what, of what um, can take place. Um, and man, I mean, it, I mean, it's been, I mean, it was awesome. It was really awesome. Um, and I feel, I feel very blessed to have uh, as much support as I do from so many different areas. Um, and you killed the I, game, bro. You killed, you're well, thank you. killing and the I, game. I want, I want to, I strive to, you know, support other people who may not have, especially in this business, but, you know, also just in general, support people um, who may not have had that support necessarily. Yeah. Um, 
and some people don't some people don't have yeah. that some people i mean everybody everybody deserves to dream everybody deserves to live their dream you know we're all striving after something that we want to do in life mm-hmm. what we're what we're here for no matter what it is and if it's taking over your father or mother's company if it's teaching if it's becoming some mm-hmm. an actor yeah not, whatever it is we're all striving to just go after the thing that we're here for the what, thing that we love to do yeah it's like what gives your soul life yeah and what makes your soul happy what mm-hmm. fills you up as a person then go out and do that um, oh, so you you bad. had to make the hard decision again i after after having amazing success and let me tell you if anyone else not told you you had success in new york city and i think yeah. there's also this thing that oh i gotta move back we're we're in this fucking crazy pen, pandemic crazy yeah. nonsense that no one knows what's happening no what made you you made that choice and is it something you feel like is going to be a forever choice or just a choice at the moment it it for sure is not a forever choice um yeah. i i'm very much a city boy i love the city um and not even well, you're, from, just, you're from you're uh, from Kearney, nebraska right i'm from Kearney, nebraska Fuck Kearney. which uh Kearney. if you well yeah you so for those of you who don't know Fuck the Bearcats. The, the, the town that Dustin grew up in, Grand Island, Nebraska, and the hey. town that I grew up in, Kearney, Nebraska, were high school rivals. Yeah. So there's a story for you. I mean, maybe you've told me this. I didn't even – when you filled out my little podcast form – yeah, I'm professional, everybody. Um, mm-hmm. You put that. I was like, I didn't fucking know Joe was in Kearney. Maybe yeah. we've never talked about it, or maybe we have, and I just forgot. We have. But I thought we it was- totally have. <laughs> And that's drunk Dustin for you. Yep, totally have. Um, because I heard that you were from Grand Island, and I was like, you know, you know, I'm from your high school rival, right? And then I did think you, you did like, you play football in high school? I did. Uh, my did. I did I did uh, completely my freshman year, and then I did uh, about a week my sophomore year, a week of two days before classes started, and um, two days suck, bro. A uh, two days do suck, and and it's not that I didn't love football; I loved football i loved playing football um but it it had gotten to the point where i had to choose between doing football and theater and i was really wanting to do theater all right so we left off we were talking about is a you had uh had to had to choose between theater and football yeah which i had to kind of go through in a sense but Mm -hmm. Can you explain that for everybody? Why, why is it feel, why did you feel like you had to choose between the two instead yeah. of being able to do the two, which you should, um, which for anyone, just to let you know, you should be able to do anything you want to do, especially 100%. In high school. and making any high school student choose between something. Mm-hmm. You suck. Continue. No, hundred percent. Um, and, and there had been multiple people, um, throughout the history of that school that had made it work where they're able to do theater and sports. Um, and I applaud uh, those people. Um, no, it really just got to be the point. Um, I was doing a show at night during two days, and I was getting up at like 5 a.m. to be at the school at like 6.30 for a 7 a.m. practice. Um, and, and, and I couldn't drive at the time. I was only 15. So I didn't, you know, I didn't have my license. My parents were still having to take me everywhere. And it just, it was so much going on. And it was just like, man... I'm exhausted doing both these things. And I'm this is when you were a sophomore, correct? This is, this is only when I'm a sophomore. Sophomore, and yeah. Like, and I'm like, I'm exhausted doing both of these things right now. Um, I, I don't think I can, I can continue doing both of them. And so I literally had to be like, well, where, where, where's my heart more? I love doing football. I love doing theater. Um, but I, I loved doing theater a bit more. It was, it, again, it was the thing that kind of brought me out of my shell and really uh, helped me discover who I am as a person. And it still is continuing to help me discover who I am as a person. That's really cool. Interesting to me. Cause I kind of, I guess I was, I, I've said this basically on every episode. I've never thought of myself as a typical theater person, which yeah. I don't think typical theater people, it's not a negative. I just, I never really was into it. I was very, um, I always created, looking back on it when I was younger, I created movies with my mom's childcare and like yeah. trying to like do whatever, which is like kind of like, oh, I was always on this, this path. But in high school, I 
all I did was play football. I played freshman, sophomore year. Now, granted, I did do some sort of show. I did like the eighth grade show and I, Mm -hmm. in middle school, it's always, I love entertaining and being creative. But when I was in high school, it was just, oh, I'm going to, I'll play football. And if anyone is listening from high school, I will never say that I was an amazing football player. I cared about girls way too much to even give a shit about fucking football. I, Honestly, me too, though. Yeah, I didn't fucking die. I, 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 I think I did football thinking that it would get me a girlfriend. That's funny. I, Grant, I had like a high school, uh, you know, the high school love girlfriend basically throughout all of high school. Mm. But I, I lifted weights and it was like football was the only, I was like, all right, I'll do football and I'll lift weights or whatever. I just didn't. And I, I, I'm not going to hand on this because I did talk about it on the Drew podcast. But, uh, yeah, I, um, my last podcast, yeah, I, I did my Shakespeare show. And then that year I went through a breakup. And as emotional as I am, I uh, decided to quit football. And then didn't do football mm-hmm. my whole junior year. And then got involved in theater and then realized, oh, I'm actually good at this. And I yeah. wasn't really good at football. I didn't put the effort into it. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm actually – I can make this work. And – that's awesome. Like fi- finally yeah. finding something like, Oh, I'm going to do it. And then, you know, I played yeah. my senior year, but I was, you know, I just wasn't, didn't put the effort into it. I skipped mm-hmm. practices to go to a uh, musical rehearsal. Cause I ended up loving just being around the theater, theater type of type of people. I thought they were always just funnier and yeah. there were way more girls. There were way more girls in the, well, there, in the yeah, musical. There was that. I more think, football practice. Well, and, and this goes back to the whole, like, um, you know, in elementary school when people would call me weird and everything. Uh, and I took it as a compliment. Like theater kids embrace the weirdness. I, mean, I just didn't think I I didn't do that though. I was always oh, really like, uh, yeah. I was very I I hated people saying that I wasn't like I would be funny. I like being funny, but like I didn't yeah. want to be think of as weird. Like oh, like I I went through a time where it was like I'm um, playing football, but I'm in theater, and then coaches would be like why are you in this show? You need to be in the weight room. And like, the one thing I loved was weightlifting. I loved weightlifting. Oh, same. Fucking uh, barbell shit. Oh, um, well, see, I would, oh, dude, I was a, I was a leg guy. Nah, leg nah. day was my day. And now I have completely switched. I'm like, I would give anything to never do a leg day. Again. Yeah, fuck squats. <laughs> fucking hate them. Um, what the way the world is turning into is creating your own work and, Right now you're being like, you can't do a show. You could do it on Zoom maybe with people that are creating that kind of stuff. But it felt that creative block for me that I, I didn't know I needed. And, but I never felt, I, it took me a while to like, I didn't embrace the weird. I always had a fear of, oh, I want to feel cool to everybody. And it's taken a while for me to kind of like, literally this year is the most I've ever been like, ah, fuck it. Don't care. I yeah. literally, people. Well, and <laughs> it, it, it's hard. It's hard to have that mentality. I mean, like, there are still times where it's, like, it's so easy for me to retreat back into myself and not be my full-fledged, like, outgoing um, self, especially when I'm in a room, like, full of strangers um, that's not an audition. Um, because it's, like, we, you know, we've been trained, you know, for an audition. It's just, like, yeah, this is normal. Like, yeah. being in this room full of strangers who are behind a table um, and doing this sort of, you know, interview setup deal that it is that we do that's normal um and so like we we've, we've we've learned to embrace that a little bit you know um but like if it's like a social event or whatever and i'm just in a room full of random strangers i'm like man i don't i don't know i don't i don't know how to break the ice well you feel that way now i feel that way you, now you, you, oh, you i feel, feel that, i feel now. that way okay. now i'm like i'm like i don't i don't know how to break the ice because like me as a person, it's like, it's very hard to, um, uh, let's say, uh, push the boundaries of my bubble. Like my bubble is basically non-existent. Hmm. Um, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by I mean, like, I mean, like there, there have been a few cases where it's like, like, Hey, anyone come into my bubble? Don't give a fuck. No, no. I mean, like, I mean, like you need to give me some space sort of. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. there have been so like i can count on maybe three fingers the amount of times in my life where i've experienced like hey can you just give me some space real quick um like it 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 just doesn't happen for me i'm a very open person i'm a very like um you know i'm a very 
I'm a very open person. Um, open book is the term you're looking I'm for. A, yeah, I'm a very open book, you know, and, <laughs> but I understand that not everyone is. And so yeah. I try to get a read on the personality first, but then I also sidetrack myself because it's like, well, I can't get a read on the personality unless I don't try, but I'm not going to try because I don't get a read on the personality and I just end up psyching myself out. And, uh, but, but ultimately it's like, I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. Um, you feel like you're kind of, you, you're um, uh, stationed is the only word I can think of, but you, like, yeah. you're like, you want to control, you want to always be able to control the way that you say or come out. Yeah. To yeah. Um, and so it's like, once somebody comes up to me, then it's just like, Oh, immediately like open book, but me yeah. coming up to somebody um no like that's the odd thing i'm okay with that that's all that's a skill that i have i'll be like ah mm -hmm. give me a couple beers i'll be like all right what's up stop yeah, that well that definitely helps yeah you know i mean I, you it. know it's a tricky thing bro it is, it is a very tricky thing i mean um you know moderate it of course moderate but, it you should uh um, yeah don't but, listen to me but uh yeah moderate but but i mean you know for sure like i've definitely had um you know, uh, you know, after having a drink or two, had a bit more um, gusto, gusto, confidence, and just going up to a person and striking up a conversation. You know, yeah. yeah. So we kind of both, at least I do, have random thoughts. Oh, I hundred percent live in 100%. my life in random thoughts throughout yes. the day. Yes, and. I love that you brought it like or when you were texting me about like, oh, we talk about um like gym like thoughts you're thinking about during the gym. What are some like random thoughts that you think of throughout the day? I um I think people think I'm really weird because I think my head, as nice as I am as a person, I come out as a big Midwestern boy. I'm like, yes, ma'am, no, 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 no. Um <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I put toying on there and people are like, what? you're not even from Are what you are Boom you Hower from King of the Hill? <laughs> Dang old man, I'll tell you what, that internet man, you just go on there and you're like www dot click 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 click. I man. do sometimes I'll tell you what, you can just go on there, man, and dang on ding ding on the internet, you know. Sometimes what I'm about, I just man? put toying on the end of my voice just for the fuck of it. And I did do it once because someone was like, Will you talk to that girl in a, like a country like toying accent the entire night? I'm like, Yeah, why not? Why not? Um sure. then you gotta be like you How know, you doing? Like, you talk little like, thing. Hey, babe. Um, hey, but yeah, random thoughts like, <laughs> hey, baby, <laughs> hey, you have, do, <laughs> hey, you do. I have some of the most random thoughts ever in my head. Um, what are some mm -hmm. like random thoughts that you have, like when you're in the gym or like just doing shit throughout uh, the day? I tell you what, I, I, and I try to tweet them when I can. Um, I don't tweet ever. I, I don't either. I'm terrible at it. But I tell you what, I, I've monitored it. The last few times I've tweeted have been like random gym thoughts. Um, the <laughs> last one I had was, uh, is it really a peanut butter sandwich if you don't put peanut butter on both slices of bread before slapping it together? Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. You just put a peanut butter sandwich together with doing that? I've never done that ever. Yeah. Why? You wait, oh. you just, all right, hold on. When oh, I, when I, well, okay, so is it really a peanut butter sandwich? Like sandwich oh, being the emphasis. Okay. Gotcha. Like is it real? Is it really a peanut butter sandwich if you don't put peanut butter on both slices of bread before slapping it together? Okay, I'm understanding it now. But yeah, I would totally agree. Like, no, it's not. No, it's fucking no. Not. No. No. You have you have a slice of peanut butter toast and another slice of toast. Do you feel like you can't share those thoughts with people in public unless you're really close with those people? Or like those random thoughts you have. Well, I mean, I would I wouldn't go up to some random stranger in the middle of their work. Hey, Billy. And, um, <laughs> no, I mean, not even not even like knowing their name, being like, uh, "Excuse me, sir, is it really a peanut butter sandwich <laughs> if you don't put peanut butter on both slices of bread before slapping it together?" If you did do that, I would have I would give you all the props because that would be fucking um, funny as fuck. I, I I would either make a really good friend that day or uh, someone would call the cops on me. One of, one of the two. You're risking and that thing. There's um, no in between on that. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, like I sometimes I just tweet um uh like what. You know, like you've been at the gym and it's like, yeah, maybe you're, you know, halfway through your workout and it's just like, oh man, I feel myself kind of like dragging down a little bit. 
uh, and then like a song comes on and you're like, oh man, second wave, let's go. There have been a couple instances uh, where it's been like a random song that like should not be part of a gym playlist that's on that I have gotten like so lit to. Dude, I feel that shit so hard. Yeah. I will have like sometimes it's not a song that you're like, you know, you have like a workout playlist or whatever it is. But yeah. like if I if that song hits and I, for some reason, whatever that song it is, I'm yeah, like dude. felt that shit and then I will play that shit for twenty Let's minutes. Go. I, yeah. I'll replay it over and over again. Oh, like, I just yeah. feel it, and I'm just like running, thinking I remember, that I'm the gladiator from Rome, and I'm gonna. I remember it. one day I was, uh, I was, I was at Planet Fitness back in New York, and uh, uh, I was, I was hitting that wall, like kind of like, mid, like midway through my. Hey, dude, I love Planet Fitness. I don't like Planet Fitness. I love Planet Fitness. Um, I, I, I hit that wall like midway through my workout, and I'm just like, oh man, what am I gonna do? And then. Panic at the Disco's cover of Into the Unknown from Dude, Frozen that Drew song is on. fire as shit. And I was so lit, bro. Oh Dude. my god. I started doing push-ups like off the wall. I was like, man, let's fucking go. That song is fucking fire. To be I honest, that, song. that whole play, that whole fucking soundtrack is fire. Yeah. Dude. Oh, I will, I'll go going better. Frozen 2 is better than Frozen 1. I never saw Frozen 2, um, but I believe okay. it. Well, yeah, and I, I loved believe. Frozen 1. I loved Frozen 1, man. <laughs> I was with Miles. I mean, I actually will. Granted, I, I worked with kids in New York City. That was like kind yeah. of my thing. Um, so I, I knew that it was when it came out. I was like, I'm going to yeah. need to fucking know what this fucking thing is. Yeah. And Miles and I at the time were doing our podcast. And we were like, well, let's talk about Frozen 2. So me, two grown-ass men just Hell yeah, walking in Frozen 2 <laughs> and just watching it. But that soundtrack what if, what is if, fucking awesome. What it what is the greatest um kids movie? The greatest kids movie? I'll 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 I narrow mean, it down. Either Disney or Pixar. I mean, dude, I if you're talking about like my favorite Disney movie ever is Lion King. I will say probably Toy Story is probably a better if you're just talking strict kids, like yeah, if yeah. I if I have kids, I'll show yeah. them all the Toy Stories. The yeah. continuation of the Toy Story movie. The fact that they get better every fucking year. Do they do? Oh my you god! You saw Toy they Story do. four, right? Uh, oh, but uh, I was on an airplane watching it, and uh, like the last twenty minutes of the flight, which was also the last twenty minutes of the film, they yeah. shut the Wi-Fi off, I... and I couldn't finish it. <laughs> Fuck that! And I was, I was a little bit, I was, I was a little bit tilted. Not you finished lie. it though, right? No, I, I, I never... don't know what. I don't know what happens in the last 20 minutes of the right. film. Well, I'm not going to ruin that for you. Um, I will say that that show, so, like, I remember seeing Toy Story 3 and being emotional as shit and being Oh, like, my God. I, 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 I cried like a Ball. baby. Ball. Cried like a baby. Perfect ending to the whole series franchise. Oh, my God, whatever. yeah. Should yep, yep. Toy Story 4 tops it again. Toy Story 4 makes it better. Dude. I don't know how they do it. Pixar just knows what they're fucking doing. They do. They do. It's I, insane. I, I'd say, I'd say my, top, my top three favorite ones – um are I, I i think i gotta give it to are you mixing are you mixing disney and pixar i disney and I, pixar yeah, disney i mix them pixar. both together i don't like separating the two yeah I, I i do too i like i like mixing both yeah. mainly because when i was growing up i was not a disney kid like i like i i and, and i say that like i it's not that i didn't like disney i liked disney and i still like disney like just fine i think disney's amazing uh -huh. um I had such a bad attention span as a kid that I would start to watch like uh, any of these movies and I just, I could not finish it. Like I, my mind would just want to go somewhere else and I, and I would never finish it. So to give you an example, I didn't see the lion King for the first time until Christmas two years ago. Are you fucking kidding me? How the Dead fuck serious. have you ne ever seen what? Dead serious. And there still is like so many. Dude, like, if you would have told me that ever, I would have literally been like, yeah. watch, I would have bought you the movie and be like, watch this shit. No, now. but and, 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 and it's not that like I, I, I don't like the movies. Again, I think these movies are. No, fantastic. I'm kind of confused now. So you said you didn't have the attention span. So what is it that you no. watch that grasp your attention span? Because <laughs> I lived off Disney, like my fucking anything. Disney, Pixar, whatever. Like I lived off that shit. You're I lived off that either, professional you're ready, wrestling. You're ready. To, you're ready to either laugh your ass off or uh, tell you that you're a loser. Yeah. Or tell me that I'm the biggest piece of shit on the face of the planet. 
Austin Powers. I mean, no, I fucking love Austin Powers. Are you kidding me? Gold member? That's the funniest shit. No, but I mean the OG Austin Powers in like kindergarten. What does that mean? Like, like the first movie of Austin like Powers? The fr- like the first movie of Austin Powers. Dude, those movies I would, are all I would, amazing. I would, I would watch it on repeat every day after school in like kindergarten, first grade. Now, I wouldn't say that I adore those movies. I think that they're great. Um, Michael, like a gold member is like my favorite one from oh. all those. Uh, but I, think I, I think I would agree with that. You would I love gold member. I think so, I think I think Gold Member is probably my favorite one of the three. Michael Myers, I think, as as a lot of uh, comedic actors have, like a, yeah. a very specific type. But I, the thing that he is very good at is mm-hmm. fucking awesome. So does oh, that yeah. mean like, which did you love Shrek? Then I loved Shrek. Shrek is loved awesome. Yeah. Shrek. Shrek, Shrek two, Shrek, Shrek three, kind of sucked though. In my um, I saw Shrek two, and uh, I felt the need not to see the rest of the Shrek movies. Yeah, I remember seeing. I'm kind of one of those people that like if I see the first of something, I want to see like just to see whatever. Even if I hate it, I'm like I got. Oh, see for the sure. End of it for sure. I mean that that's the way I I was with Pirates of the Caribbean. You ever you ever got detention during uh, school? Uh, no. However, I have cam. Uh, that was a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think in my mind I was like I came very close, but then I said I have, and I was like, no, it's that come is the is the correct version to say that. <laughs> anyway um i came very close uh a couple times to having detention in class um yeah. i remember the first time i was in fourth grade and uh i uh we were watching a movie uh, and it was a vhs tape so you know there were previews at the beginning of it and everything um and one of the previews was for this like r-rated film um it was like some like supposed to be like some thriller action movie or whatever it was r-rated and uh me thinking i was being smart and funny and cute in fourth grade was like oh that movie's r-rated i want to go see that i think we should see that and uh the teacher uh, did not appreciate that for very good reason and uh uh was like no you need to stay after for detention for that and i was like okay so i stayed after um and she was like do you understand why what you did was uh not okay and i was like yeah yeah i understand that um and she's like are you sure and i was like yeah and she was like sure mm-hmm. and I, and she was like okay you can go so i mean there there was that and then uh in middle school there was a uh there was a kid in my grade who will remain nameless and uh freddie nope <laughs> uh, be awesome that would be awesome if you're like and uh, uh, this, uh. <laughs> this person um uh made fun of my weight i have had a i've had a very up and down journey with my weight my entire life well, you have been kicking ass at it, man. You look fucking awesome. Oh, so. thank you so much. Thank you so much. I need um, to do whatever you're doing. I'm, it I'm it not... still is a very much a process, but um, oh, you yeah. know, we're no working reasons. on it for sure. Um, but in, you know, in middle school, I, uh, I, um, you know, I was I was a very heavy set kid, and uh, he, uh, he it would call me a big fat monster, yada yada yada, and uh, one day in class, I just got sick of it and uh i punched him and the teacher saw and was like joe that'll be detention after school and so i go in for detention and uh (laughs) the teacher goes uh look i get it this kid's obnoxious all right but you can't punch people and and i was like okay i won't punch people and so the teacher goes okay you can go (laughs) Yeah, Joe, we, um, as much as we are similar in mindsets, we are probably different in that. My dad told me to hit first and not let that motherfucker ever hit me again. Um, I've lived in that mindset, which I've had to battle for years. Yeah. I, I remember <laughs> the first time I got sent, um, I had, um, I was just in like a history class and this kid wouldn't stop saying shit to me. He was just like, he, yeah, I didn't call me a loser or something. I just, Went up, threw a book at his head, 
And <laughs> the teacher's like, Dustin! Like, and I just, I didn't even feel apologetic. I was just like, the kid wouldn't shut up. Granted, <laughs> I, I, in my head, I was pissed I didn't just hit him. And I, yeah, my first reaction was to throw a book and then the, send me to the principal. And actually, I didn't get attention off that because I remember the, it was the, vi- they sent me to the vice principal and the vice principal goes, Dustin, why are you here? And I go, I'm going to be real with you. Uh, the kid wouldn't shut up and I just was tired of it. And then <laughs> because I was on the football team, she goes, I know you're a good kid. Just, just leave. Don't throw books at people's heads. <laughs> and <laughs> I go, don't All throw right. books at people's heads. But I was, I was always a pretty, I, I've always been lucky with, with that, I guess. I, I have anger, whatever things I yeah. will hit first. If yeah. shit happens, it's just who I am. If mm. someone's hurting my friend, I'm going to hit them. I'm not going to really ask questions about it, but I mm. control it. I don't, Yeah. I haven't like been to a thousand fights or anything like that. No, 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 no. That's always whatever, but I've always been a good kid. I do my work, oh, yeah. do my thing, put my head down, do what I got to do. For sure. Um, but you know, it's fucking. <laughs> it's I think fun. it's, it, yeah, I, I, I would, I would agree with, with some of that, that I'm, I'm the same way. Um, I will say that when I am in like a furious state, um, which I've never seen, I've never seen that. You. That is because I, I do not let anybody see me when I'm angry. Um, I, yeah. I literally have this image of the Hulk um, that like, when I'm angry, I, I turn into this monster and uh, I, I can't always uh, my, my, my conscious mind ceases to exist and I, um, I, my, my anger tends to get the best of me. Um, and so what I have found that will help me cope with that is that's a prime time for me to go to the gym. Or what has even helped me more with that is um, some of these more serious characters that are a bit more harsh. And that has become a, uh, a healthy way that I can exude that anger and that sort of negative energy um but not harm anybody in the process um so a couple things that you're really into joe are uh, vikings yeah which, which is fun <laughs> you specifically told me not the football team which as no. everyone knows i'm a big no. Packer fan <laughs> i thought that was funny you're and, into and vikings be, and you're into head of be metal yeah um which are two going, things i'm not into I know. Or no, no, or no much about you. You, you are in fact uh, the exact opposite. I would say, in that you are a country music boy, and uh, and I guess yeah. a Green Bay Packer fan. Even though that's a football team, and I'm I'm talking more specifically the people, the historic people. <laughs> I will say, like I'm excited for the Assassin's Creed Viking game. Oh time. my god! I'm yeah. excited as fuck for that, bro. So excited. <laughs> Dude, I have been saying four years. I mean, four years. Like, since Black Flag came out, that they need to make an Assassin's Creed about Vikings. And they're finally making an Assassin's Creed about Vikings. Which I'm is, I would say, the best. So Creed, excited. Because we're also both into video games, but like uh, the Assassin's Creed, um, the, the, the last one I remember playing was uh, the the civil war one i'm forgetting the name Assassin's Creed three that one was my yeah. is my favorite Assassin's Creed i've ever played and it may because of my interesting Indian roots and the, like you're killing the red coats like yeah it was, I it was the revolutionary love war, yeah. that game black flag i never finished i kind of like lost oh, interest with that loved black flag um that's interesting like, because Assassin's, Assassin's, Creed, yeah, go ahead Assassin's Creed three i would say was my least favorite that i've played really? Simply because it to me, um, it, it it seemed to just drag on, and on and on. But keep in mind, I'm also a person when it comes to Assassin's Creed. Like I have to 100% complete the entire game. Um, okay. Like I have to get every little hidden chest that's on the map, and I gotta I gotta go do all these little minute things. Um, well, then, so did to, like, you get 100%. love? Did you love Assassin's Creed Odyssey? I never played Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I Assassin's Creed Odyssey was way too much for me. Really? It got to the point where it was like, 
I like knowing that I can finish a story. I, I've always loved the stories yeah. of games. Like even Madden, people like always give me shit for buying Madden. I love what, playing the franchise. I love. Oh, dude! I love Madden's the, fun. Yeah, Madden's super fun. I yeah. haven't played Madden in years, but I wish I could, man. Yeah, it's I fucking love Madden. Uh, uh, Slash Madden sucks. Um, <laughs> but Take I love this. I love the stories of the games. I love going through a story. Yeah. Um. So the campaigns, like Call of Duty campaign, I always have loved the campaigns. I like knowing there's a finish, there's a start, there's yeah. a finish. Mm-hmm. Just how my mind works. Um. With with Odyssey, it's such a it's a good game. I love the open. I've also loved open world shit. But with sure. Odyssey, the open world shit is so much. It was like anytime I did another thing, I was like, I'm never getting to the end of this story, and I yeah. at least want to know. This end. The Batman, uh, the Batman Arkham games, Knight. like the, yeah, like Arkham, all those are the Knight, best yeah. games I've ever played. And they even probably beat out the Spider Man game, which is also my favorite thing. Yeah. Which the story is long. It take like you could do outside stuff. Yeah. But there's not a, this is going to take me eight weeks to fucking finish. For sure. I think my, my favorite game, uh, series, um, it has so much nostalgia for me. And, and I, and I've, I've even like gone so far as to read the books, um, which is saying a lot for me because like when it comes to like reading books based off of stuff, I'm not, I'm like, I'm so not a reader unless it's like a script, you know? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I'm the same like, way. I, I'm just so not a reader unless it's a script. Um, but like, I even like, I played the games and then I read the books, uh, the Halo series, my favorite, favorite favorite series of all time zelda is a very close second but halo i think has to um has you get to be that, number one you get that energy sword and that shotgun. oh dude you get the energy sword and that shotgun you're fucking made, made. And, well and it's like and it's like they had they had a really good story for a first yeah person the story shooter. yeah the for first story person so shooter and, and and the story is so great and 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 the characters are very well developed yeah and uh man it, it and, yeah, and that, it's a game. That, it's it's a game that what I appreciate about it is it's a game that focuses just as much on the story as it does the multiplayer. Yes. And I feel like nowadays multiplayer has really taken the forefront of it, which is great. I think the multiplayer yeah. is super fun. Um, and you know, Call of Duty's Call of Duty Online is so fun, but I I still yearn for like a really fully developed and really well thought out story. And Halo. Yeah has always been that yeah halo was i was um i never was able to kind of play my family couldn't afford uh getting just like game systems and stuff when i finally i was always late and whatever but like being able i remember going to friends places and playing halo and being like this is awesome and you finally got my own xbox system yeah and like playing halo halo's story was fucking incredible man what what uh of of the game systems that you that you've ever played, what's the greatest game system in your opinion? PS4. Really? Yeah, I and you I don't, started you don't with. Do. Wow. Uh, I started with. I mean, are you just talking about like how the game system is? I I guess like all the feelings that come with this game system for you personally. I think the PS4 has the PS4 has probably the best games I've ever played. Mm-hmm. They're like you know the graphics are way better than. In, intricacy like but it, sure. it doesn't it doesn't have my favorite game ever my favorite game i ever played was on xbox um which is spartan total warrior yeah. and i am a huge greek mythology fan and oh so no wonder you played odyssey then yeah odyssey yeah. i thought odyssey was gonna be the greatest thing ever but yeah, yeah. greek mythology is like a big thing to me which is oh for dude, greek mythology's who, dope for any people greek think mythology. i just drink beer and watch football ah <laughs> i like greek mythology you- like, what, Dead it was always funny like um like when you're in theater and they start talking about like m- like uh some greek uh theater and then oh, yeah, i would like just kind of be and shit. Yeah, yeah yeah and i would yeah. go and i would that would be the time i would be like well actually and people like dustin you fucking <laughs> yeah i actually love this shit well um, it, you are you are the king of sparta i'm so. the king of sparta <laughs> i'm <laughs> dustin i'm the king of sparta <laughs> <laughs> for anyone listening uh, i played a role in trojan woman <laughs> and i was the king of sparta and joe never let me forget that um but i've always actually loved that. it was maggie maggie who came up with that first maggie thing. come up with it i think maggie oh, was maggie. the one who came up with that first well you would say it every time i walked mm-hmm. into a fucking room 
No, um, what? No, well, no, 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 no. That's, yeah, no. Already, I was the exact, already wrong. The exact thing that I would say anytime you walked into a room was, <laughs> look at that down dud in dud lip. Yeah, that dad the dud in dud lip. He a big, young, tall, strong man named Stedman. He had yeah, that dud in dud lip. <laughs> You would say that shit all the time. Remember when I would Joan, shout it from down the yeah, hall. Yeah, I would literally walk into the fucking theater department, and then I would hear that. And Joan, I remember Joan's like, "What is that?" I'm like, "Dude, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know." Man. It's just a thing now, but I love it. It's a, uh, it's it's a it's a quote, not the Dud and Dutliff bar, but that, that's not a quote uh, from a. <laughs> no, that's not a quote philosopher? from anything. That's just my stupid brain. <laughs> um, no, the uh, big, young, tall, strong man named Stedman. Uh, I believe is a quote from Nutty Professor. Oh, hi, um, dude. Joe, what's something that sparks your creativity when you're getting low, when you're going through um, things and you don't you don't feel create create creative, um, and especially during this quarantine. Yeah, during this quarantine, I created drinks on Dusty, which finally was like for sure. I I for a couple of months was like I have not been creative like i i kind of do i'm writing some shows or whatever but just wasn't whatever and this has been as an actor like we had talked about earlier like getting that that creative blockage out and this was whatever but sometimes you know creativity gets low what do you do to keep your creativity up i think one thing that helps me a lot um well and especially during this time I, i i have come up with ideas um i think um, once I have a more like permanent recording setup, um, I would love to uh, try to do a little bit of Twitch streaming. Um, okay. uh, and uh, the idea that I have is uh, set up my guitar and maybe uh, put some music to the background and go online and just have like a randomly generated prompt or, you know, suggestion from the audience. And uh, um kind of just make up like a little like 10 minute story or whatever based off this prompt that has to do with this prompt. And, and, and it'd be a way to, you know, flex my improv muscles, which I, I love improv so much. Yeah. Um, As you're very good, you're very yeah. incredibly good at the improv. Oh, thank you. And, uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a guitarist. I love, I love playing guitar so much. So uh, how long have you been playing guitar? I started playing guitar when I was 10 years old. So 14 years. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, my, uh, uh, I, I learned underneath my fifth grade teacher, who is also a very close uh, family friend of ours. His name is, shout out to John Manley. Yeah, he's a very close family friend. An amazing, amazing family. Uh, he was my fifth grade teacher. He also taught me guitar after, after uh, classes. Um, awesome. So, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of doing that. Another thing that, that uh, really helps me that uh, I think is going back a little bit to a subject that we, we started to touch on and then we, we got sidetracked. Um, hey, sounds about it, right. It is music. Um, I listen to of, uh, one of the great thing, one of the many great things I find about heavy metal music is um, it has such vivid imagery uh in it and uh it really does tell a story like um you listen to these bands like you listen to iron maiden or metallica and uh they paint such a beautiful picture of the story um and and it's almost like a a a song book you know it's or like a song audio book where it's like you're listening to it and yet you can see the image clearly in your head while uh, they're painting it out through their lyrics. But with each person, it's a completely different image. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things ever um, because it, 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 it's, it's universal and yet it's so individual at the same time. And I think it's, there are so few uh, stories, mediums, uh, examples in general of that in in the world itself that you can look at one thing and it paints such a vivid picture for you and such a vivid picture for somebody else and yet those pictures are two completely different things um, and yet and 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 there's not a wrong answer um, okay. I think I think 
that's one of the one of the many reasons I'm I'm very drawn to heavy metal music. So heavy metal music is is a big is a huge inspiration to me when I'm um, when I'm feeling uh, a little bit creatively uh, sunken. That's really interesting because I mean we're definitely probably polar opposites when it comes to music listening or For sure. anything. I think that any music genre has something that is good. I, and the only Absolutely. thing I've ever hated is like screamo <clears throat> stuff. Um, but <laughs> I, but like, you know, you're talking about heavy metal and like, that's yeah. not a genre I listen to, but I love hearing that you're, you're talking about making a story, which is something I talk about with country yeah. music telling a story. Yeah. So that makes me like Metallica is great though. I love Metallica is awesome. Oh dude. One but of the big I, four. One of the big four. Yeah. I mean, I, this just makes me want to listen to other shit. And I love that. Oh, and I mean, like I can, I mean, and let me tell you, like um, American heavy metal and rock bands are fantastic in their own way. Each band is fantastic in their own way. Yeah. The thing that opened my mind uh, and opened my ears, opened my heart to um, more heavy metal and, 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 found out that I the the heavy metal break and metal music in general breaks so many boundaries is listening to um bands from like Europe and bands from other countries. Really? Why is um, that? Oh my god. Um my favorite band is a band from Sweden. They're called Sabaton. I've seen them live in concert twice. In fact, Drew uh that was his first heavy metal concert I ever uh he ever went to. I took him to it. Yeah, he talked about that and he told me to make sure I brought it up to you to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, it was uh, it was at music. the it was at the PlayStation Theater in New York, man. It was Sabaton <laughs> and the opener was a band called Hammerfall. Bro, that was a kick-ass concert. First of all, Sabaton's whole niche is that um they deal with historic war stories. Okay. So, for example, this last album that they had was called The Great War. And um, everything on it was based off of World War I stories. Wow. Um, I did not know that. And, 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 it, and it's either from stuff that's like very like, uh, this is what people obviously heard about, or to like individuals that like you would only have to read about if you really looked for it. Sure. Um, they have uh, an album called The Last Stand, uh, which um, was about historical last stands. Uh, and they have everything from the uh, the Battle of 300 Spartans to um, the last stand of the samurai against uh, um, against like the new wage technology and uh, weaponry and uh, fully automatic weaponry. Holy shit! Um, they and it's like all through the ages. And um, the the album that really got me into Sabaton was a band, uh, an album called Carolus Rex, which they have released in both English and Swedish. And uh, it's entirely about Swedish um, kind of war heroes. Um, and that's the album that really got me into them. And then from there, uh, I actually went on to like Pandora. Uh, at the time, it was iTunes Radio. Um and and uh spotify and just went to like sabaton station and 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 went from like all these other different bands that came from europe uh and 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 denmark and france and all in russia there's a, a russian band and, and 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 all these other different countries and it opened my eyes to all this other music and all these different sounds of music and even if it's a language i don't understand i'm like there's a melody in here that i can i i can really get behind and and and, and, and this kicks ass man um, wow that's pretty and, powerful man yeah oh dude it, it and it's so powerful and i think um you know i i got to talking with someone one time and you know you go back to um you know the 70s uh and even the 60s with the british invasion uh, and and you look at bands like The Who and Def Leppard and uh, The Beatles, even going back further, and um, how they really uh, were helping rock and roll become mainstream. And before yeah. that, you look at blues artists and uh, you know rockabilly, even in the fifties, and um, and you look at like Chuck Berry, uh, and before that, you look at BB King. Uh, with blues and, and and all this and the roots rooted in blues and you go through and you see this progression 
of, yeah. of everything and, and how it's, how it's become mainstream. And it, it's so incredible and how that became mainstream. And I really think n- nowadays people are so easy to discredit metal as just, it's just screaming where one, I can go off on a completely separate tangent about how trying to get that sound coming out of your vocal cords and out of your mouth is yeah. <laughs> so hard. And that takes such immense talents and I'm not going to get into that. Um, but I think now don't discredit heavy metal. Look, look yeah. to Europe, look, look to all these other things where it's such a different sound that there is, there's something for everybody there. And, yeah. and it, and it's weird and it's niche and, and there's something that you will love in there. I guarantee it. It's time for rapid shots. Rapid shots. So rapid shots. So Joe, here's what I'm going to do. I got 10 questions here for you. Right. And uh, the purpose is, <laughs> the purpose is I'm going to ask a question to give me your fastest answer. Got uh, it. We may go on a tangent if it need be. Don't really care. Is, I, I, I have a feeling this is going to be like a, a, a Rorkshack test where it's like the inkblot <laughs> test where it's just like, uh, uh, butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, we're not that cool. A tornado. <laughs> uh, 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 An apple. Grandma. Apple. What? Banana. Make grandma. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? What, do you, what the fuck are you going That's my favorite wrong? family feud answer ever by the way i think Thank you, grandma <laughs> name something you wouldn't want to find if you break into someone's house naked grandma <laughs> Nick, what <laughs> hamburgers or hot dogs hamburgers Ooh. favorite show you've ever acted in oh fuck the first one that comes to mind is dirty rotten scoundrels okay name three of your favorite comedians Oh, uh, Jim Gaffigan, Brian Regan, John Mulaney. Ooh, nice. What's one quote you live by? Uh, laughter is the best medicine, and the best part is the refills are free and you can't overdose. Atta boy. What's my favorite football team? Green Bay Packers. Atta boy. God damn it. Favorite Second video game? is the Huskers. Hey. hey, hey. Fucking shout out, bro. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's your favorite video game to play? Favorite video game to play? Yeah. Uh, You're lounging around and you just like need a game. Like, I, oh I like man, I think uh, I think it, right now I'd probably give it to Rocket League. Rocket League. I uh, love I Rocket that for League for the first man. time. Have you played Fall Guys? No, I don't have anything that can play Fall Guys, and I'm so upset <sighs> about it. I don't have a PlayStation, and together. I don't have a PC. I have a Mac. All right. Well, I'll buy you one because I'm rich. Okay. Um, <laughs> Big deal. Big deal. Um, <laughs> deal. What's one word to describe 2020? <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> With that inflection. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. Fuck. Uh, what's your favorite Shakespeare play? It's a tie uh, between okay. The Comedy of Errors and uh, Twelfth Night. Have you um, acted in both of those? Technically. Um, actual Shakespeare comedy of errors I have acted in. Uh, I did a musical adaptation of Twelfth Night, my sophomore year of college, directed under shout out to Joan Cordy. All right, if you could bring back anyone that has passed and have a and have a beer with them, who would it be? Oh, the metal fan in me wants to say Ronnie James Dio. Okay. Um, the actor in me, even though he had. Uh, a lot of problems with it would want to say Chris Farley. I was, I, I figured, uh, yeah, I figured Chris Farley. I also yeah. thought you might have said uh, Robin Williams, actually. Oh, because he would have been mine. Robin Williams is mine. I would have loved. I would, to, I would have loved to have a drink with Robin Williams. Man, I have, I have so many, uh, I have so many inspirations in so many different areas that I, yeah. I, I seriously don't know if I could pick like a, a number one. Yeah. Um. There are actors that like are are definitely like my biggest inspirations. Film wise, it's Jack Black. Uh, stage wise, it's Alex Brightman. Mm. Uh, I like him. He's good. Yeah, dude. I. I mean, I think it's interesting. Like when you call, like I, I, th- I, I always have been a person that's like, "What's your favorite this? What's your favorite that?" Oh, for sure. I like, for sure. I like topping that kind of stuff. But like yeah. when you talk about inspirations, 
I have inspirations all over the world. Like behind my thing is Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is one of my biggest inspirations. Like, oh no shit. Uh, yeah, Muhammad like well, my dad was a boxer and learning things from boxing and him teach me boxing and then mm-hmm. his his just unrelentless fight with the government with yeah. like I'm not gonna fight for the people that are not fighting for me in our country and his non nonstop work ethic, which is always something to me, like Vince Lombardi is a coach for the Green Bay Packers. Like yeah. his quotes on my wall. Um like I have I, I have just things that like all over and like actors sure. robin williams and fucking denzel washington are like oh dude denzel that I fucking have. but so. inspirations are whatever um speaking are, of muhammad ali there. i'm sorry i gotta i gotta go ahead. tangent here uh a, a story my there's a there's a bar in new york city it's like off of 44th and 7th i think uh it's like yeah. right off of times square um it's called jimmy's corner uh it's honestly one of my favorite bars in the entire uh, city because you can get a bottle of Corona for $4, which I know sounds expensive, but for New York, I'm like a bottle of Corona <laughs> at any time. New York like prices bucks. with anything are like, uh, for four bucks, no, let me, like, let oh me tell you, uh, it's God. New York. Like, <laughs> and, and it's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. So for four bucks at any time, by the way, like he does, that's not like that's a happy hour, like four bucks for a bottle of Corona. Um, <laughs> It's called Jimmy's Corner, and I was uh, I was there with my buddy Isaac, who I went to high school with, who now lives in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there one night, and we were catching up, and there was a, a gentleman who sat down next to us, uh, an older gentleman, and people kept asking us to like take a picture with him, uh, yada yada yada. And eventually, we asked the guys uh, behind us who were like who had asked us to take a picture previous with him, and and we were just like, yeah, who 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 is that guy? And uh, they're like, he's the owner. Like, look at all the pictures. And we look down and it's like, yeah, it's like all these boxing pictures and everything. And it's this guy named Jimmy. And it turned out he trained with and sparred with Muhammad Ali. Damn, man. I would have and, and he was sitting. I the fuck out. He was shit. sitting, I'm not kidding you, three feet from us. And we, and we, and we looked up, uh, we looked online uh, about him and yeah he like he had like trained and sparred with muhammad ali um and he had a he had his own bar jimmy's corner which is where we were, we were at and uh there was a signature drink of his called jimmy's hurricane so my buddy isaac ordered each of us uh jimmy's hurricane and we said cheers jimmy here's to you my man and uh <laughs> best bar in new york city dude that bar and uh a bar on 50th and ninth called Valhalla uh, were my two favorite bars. And, and the Whalen, the Whalen honestly was a close third. Uh, the Whalen's my shit, man. I, I know the way I know. And you were the one who introduced us to the Whalen. Yeah, man. The Whalen's my shit. Man. I, it's, a country, I, I, it's a country bar that plays Packer. That, it's a country bar that plays country music throughout the day. Yeah. And then when the Packers are playing, um, they do bar, all the man. sound. It's a Packer bar. Yeah, dude. But I do remember. Yeah. You and Chase had came. I was like, do you ever watch the Packer game with me? Yeah, and, dude. And, I'm a, and I remember, uh, I remember the fucking greatest it was bar like, in the world, man. It was like, it was like the, like the first two weeks of us living there, of course. And, uh, <laughs> we met up with you at the Whalen and I got a Snapchat from my mom and she was like, you, uh, you better be being okay. And then I Snapchatted you and it was like, Hey, do you want to send anything to my mom? And you were like, yep. <laughs> don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of your son. I've, you know, I've been living here. I'm, I'm taking care of your son, making sure he's doing okay. Yeah, <laughs> she, that's me. She being the loving, <laughs> the loving person she is. I, I love my mom so much. She was like, Same. in a very joking manner, but uh, pretending she's serious was like, you better. Yes, I'll come and find you. <laughs> and you were like, I'm, that, I'm yeah. slightly scared of her. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. Deep and fuck. I'm like, and I'm, I'm a like, drunk, you and should, I'm, I'm a lunatic, mom. But, <laughs> you should be, but also you have to understand my mom is like one of the most loving people on the face of the planet. Yeah. So. she's fucking awesome oh uh, yeah that. like usual we got on a tangent on rapid yeah. shots but uh last question you made yeah. it through last question we got through whatever only one wow. tangent so far wow yeah one tangent which is pretty impressive all right wow. uh describe our friendship in one word all right all right all right <laughs> I mean, it's it it is one word just repeated three times, but yeah, that, yeah. that's that's how I would describe our friendship. I like that, and that's rapid shots, everybody. Hell yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I fucking love that, man. Dusty's Drunken Thoughts, y'all. Here we go. Drunk ass. God damn it. These are all, um, these are drunken thoughts that I have just had. Yeah. Throughout weeks, months, whatever, when I'm drunk and I just think of them. So I'm going to say the thought to you and sure. you give me your opinion, whatever, you know, yeah. bro. Um, <laughs> so I have three of them today. Uh, Dusty's drunken thought number one. Um, so have you, have you ever went to Dairy Queen? I was literally at Dairy Queen this afternoon. Okay. So Dairy Queen. So when I <laughs> went back to Nebraska, yeah. Um, Dairy Queen people do that thing when you go through the drive through and then they, <laughs> seriously, it makes me laugh. Yeah. So they're about to hand you their ice cream and then they go, Oh, and then they flip it upside oh, down. If it's a blizzard. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're fucking stupid. I fucking hate it so much. <laughs> and so I, I just, I don't, I what, understand. you don't like fucking magic tricks. <laughs> It's, it's a stupid mad trick. What's it's wrong? A, Who cares? They're defying gravity. They're a Dina Menzelling that shit. All right. Here's the thing. Every time they do that, I go, hold it there for two minutes. And then I, and that's all I wanted to tell them. Well, then is, this is going to fucking melt. Hey, the point. Fuck you, dude. I this don't is care. It's going to fucking melt. I don't care. Why are you going to be a buzzkill just... about it? That's the point. That's my point of my fucking segment, Joe. Gotta be a fucking boss kill about it. This, Why do you call this, this Justin's drunken thought? Why do you call this being like Dustin drunkenly becomes a fucking buzz kill about hey, Dairy you. Queen and blizzards? Let the magic be magic. Fuck the magic. And here's why it's not magic to me is because when I, when this girl, I finally got fed up with it. I'm in Nebraska for about two and a half months. And this girl, like I bought uh, ice cream for like my little brother and my sister. And I go, and I'm like, oh, you know, it's handing the money. And then she looks at me and she just goes, and I go, hold, please. Has that ever fallen out ever? Hold that for one minute. And she goes, I can't, I can't do that. I'm like, cause it's going to fall out. It's going to fall out. Right. And she goes, yeah. <laughs> I go, but I don't care. I don't care that you're. Like, this doesn't impress me. I don't will like, I really want my ice cream now. This is not the <laughs> selling point. The taste is the yeah. selling point for me. <laughs> this is, I don't go, made the right decision. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking care that you flipped it upside down. And then I'm like, I really Looks want like it's going to be a good day today. The blizzard <laughs> yeah, stayed. Yeah, I don't. And my favorite thing is this lady goes, when I call her, I'm like, hold on. Tell me how many times this is a falling out of ice cream. A lot. So, she, so it's falling out. I don't care, bro. Just hand me the fucking ice cream. It could be a melted puddle. I'll drink it. I don't <laughs> care. Yeah, and also you I'm can still put the spoon it. in it if you want to. I don't. If it's policy, whatever, man. Just, just hand it to me. Yeah, just hand it to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a five dollar little cardboard Dude, cup don't. of milk. I'm not here thinking I've spent thirty bucks. If I if I spent thirty dollars on the ice cream and then I'm like, flip that shit upside down. Let me. I need know you to flip it's... that shit upside yeah. down. This isn't thirty dollars worth unless you can defy gravity. Yeah, you? yeah. I, I spent five bucks on this ice cream. Fucking whatever. Um. <laughs> but can you flip it upside down? <laughs> it makes me. I just get. I'm like, <laughs> any fucking time I'm doing, I'm like, dude, I don't like. I, I always think in the I back. I don't. <laughs> Care. In the back of my head, I feel like they're like when again we talk about random thoughts. I yeah. feel like they're like, oh, I'm about to fucking work this motherfucker. And then <laughs> this guy's gonna up, shit his down. pants at this. Yeah. He's I'm, not gonna fucking believe it. Nah, dude, I don't care. I don't care. Um, it's just aggressive <laughs> to me. Um, <laughs> um drug <and> thought <laughs> number two. Number two. Um, Heath Ledger's performance um, in, the, in The Dark Knight. Fucking amazing. Is the greatest acting performance I've ever seen in a cinematic I film. I love that movie so much. It, I had just rewatched like all three films just a couple days ago. Yeah. And I, I, I've always kind of said that as an actor and always I'm like, I watch it and I study it. I'm like, how, how do you do this? How do you do that? Yeah, and I watched it again to kind of like I've always again stated that I think it's the greatest acting performance I've ever seen on film, 
and I watched again. I'm like, dude, the, and I again picked up on another little new, like little nuances that he's doing. It is the greatest acting performance I've seen on film, other films like uh, the night, the fucking night, night's tale. It's night's tale. Mm, yeah. And the fact that you watch night's tale and then you watch um, dark night. I'm like, this dude's fucking skill set is on a whole nother level. For and, sure. Yeah. I've always just really appreciated that. Oh, dude. I, I remember, you know, like most of the time when you go see a movie, you're like, oh, man, I want I want the protagonist to like come in and just like, you know, kick ass. Yeah. When I saw The Dark Knight, and this is nothing against, um, you know, Christian Bale. I think Christian Bale does such a phenomenal. Oh, I think he's the best Batman. There's I, I, I think he does such a phenomenal job. But I remember seeing that movie in theaters being like, I want, I want more screen time for the Joker. I want. Like, I'm so fascinated by this character. I'm so fixated on this character. Yeah. Um, I, and, and, and at that point, it was, like, un, it was unlike any other Joker I've ever seen, heard, whatever. Um, it was, I mean, at that point, it was, the Joker had become a character that truly was terrifying. Yeah. Um, which is how I always had seen the Joker, like being like, it's just a scary figure and I'm not knocking Jack Nicholson's Joker. I think that there no, is a or place Mark for Hamill's. that. Or yeah. Mark Hamill's by oh, any, yeah. you know, Mark Hamill is the OG. I mean, he, Oh is, yeah. His voice. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, if you're just talking vo- yeah. His voice is like, yeah. Oh dude, that's fucking, um, like that's the Joker, but it, it's such yeah. a different take on the character that was, I don't know. Not it shown. Set, yeah. yeah, it it brought it brought a a, a reality to it, and yeah. it could have been the time, it could have been just the performance. I don't know. Yeah, but it it, it was more than uh it was more than just a clown. It was an actual yeah. like psychopath. Yeah. Drunken uh, dusty thought number three. Number three. Don't fucking tell me I don't know numbers. Um, let's go. I'm the math one, remember? That's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, you are. That's what we're doing. Um, I hate that the lion is called the king of the jungle. It really pisses me off because, because, because one, he doesn't live in a jungle. He doesn't live in a jungle. He lives in the savannah in Africa. Uh, two, the tiger is bigger. Um, and like this idea that the lion is the king of the jungle, everyone bows down. I feel like the tiger that's like, hey, motherfucker, like, I'll fuck some shit up. Like, don't fuck. Eh. Okay. Um, it really pisses me off. And I just don't understand it. So, um, so, are, so are you saying the tiger should be named yeah. the king of the yeah. jungle? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. He's bigger. He's stronger. And he lives in a jungle. And I mean, the lion, I, I, I can't argue with you. I mean, yeah, I know you can't argue with that. I mean, it's fucking I, right. It's right. I, w- I, I, I would not be offended uh, one way or another if it changed to the tiger or if it stayed the lion. Um, Joe, my man, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Do you have anything you want to plug, talk about um, that people can look you up on, watch you, oh, talk to you, or anything sure. like that? Um, you know what, man? First of all, let me thank you so much for, for having me on here. This has been such a fucking blast. Um, Thanks, yeah, if you want to follow me, follow me Instagram, Twitter, both at Joe Hansen Actor, H A N S O N, all one word. Uh, and I think th- my YouTube is the exact same. If not, it's just Joe Hansen. Um, follow me on YouTube. I'm hoping to get some more videos up there. I have a couple videos, like ones of me playing guitar, ones of me doing like a karaoke version of a song I really love. That's um, awesome. Yeah, man. Uh, subscribe to Drinks with Dusty. Uh, if you want to follow me on social media and subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, it would really help me out. Um, and you know what, man, like y'all got this, we got this. I know, uh, times are super rough right now and super hard in a lot of ways, but, uh, keep your head up, keep supporting, keep loving one another. And we're going to make it through this. Fuck yeah, Joe. That's a uh, powerful shit. And I'm not even going to try to supplant it, but you know, Hey, we're all here. We're all uh, trying to make some laugh and trying to be happy and uh, make make the world a better place, which Hell is yeah. uh, all we want to do. Um, so thank you guys so much for listening. Um, again, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, if you do, 
that'd be fucking dope. And I'll send you a gift. Um, and uh, thank you guys so much for, um, for doing well. Um, so I appreciate all the love and support that we've had. My um, man, Joe, thank you so much for talking to me. And uh, hey man, thank you podcast, again, my brother. All right, we're going to peace out. Bye, y'all.